How many he heard about the ninth planet? Another ninth planet. <laughs> Mike Brown will have to hear that, that there's a rousing cheer for planet nine. Planet X. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now the show is running like it's supposed to. Right. Uh, no, like it usually does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, Planet Nine or IX is because Planet X was the name given to a million bogus claims of some freakish planet on the outer parts of our solar system that was going to spell doom for Earth, and uh, in fact, that is not going to happen. However, there is another planet that has, uh, well, shall we call it discovered? You be the judge. Has it been discovered or just suggested? This planet is between, uh, well, it's about 10 times the mass of Earth, so it's more like a Neptune planet, but we don't know really what it look, looks like. Is it a gassy planet? Would it look like Neptune? Would it be blue? A lot of the artwork you see in the newspapers make it look like Neptune, but it is more massive than Earth, a lot more massive, about 10 times more massive than Earth. Now, we haven't seen this planet, and this is important to say, but that doesn't mean that it isn't there. There are a lot of things we can't see, like dark matter, uh, black holes, but we know that they're there because they have an impact on the environment around them, and that's how uh, this was discovered. This uh, diagram shows a man's hand, um, <laughs> and uh, yes, it's not the handwriting on the wall in Babylon. Ooh, I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. We could have put it Anyway, um, uh, it's showing the orbits of a bunch of comet-type objects in the outer solar system well outside the orbit of Neptune in those purple lines. And the wacky thing about them, and I'll come back to show you a little bit more, is that they all seem to go their closest place, their closest approach to the sun, right around the same place in space. Um, that place, that word is called the uh, perihelion. Yes! <laughs> Happy people. Also had crushes on periwittle. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so that's an old thing from a previous show. So they all kind of cross around the same place. These are the two discoverers, Mike Brown on the left and Constantine Batygin. Brown, um, uh, who is well known as the man who killed Pluto, because he was the one who found Eris, another object out, of, out in the pa past Neptune that is about comparable mass as Pluto. And there are a whole bunch of these things out there. So this is when we ruled out Pluto as the ninth planet because it really is part of a different population of, the, of something called Kuiper Belt objects. And so when we started finding other Kuiper Belt objects, and especially when we found Eris, Mike Brown on the left found Eris, and it was the same mass, you know, sorry Pluto, you really are part of a different family. You don't get to be part of the, nine, the eight uh, major planets. So it's quite exciting that the same man who killed Pluto, in fact, found planet nine. And uh, he did that, I started talking about the orbits of some of those objects out there. The, all these little symbols, that omega and the little W looking thing and the, the, you know, all of those are different elements of an orbit. How much it is inclined, how close does it come to uh, the sun, how big is its orbit, um, where does it rise up out of the uh, ecliptic plane and where does it drop back down into the ecliptic plane, that's called the line of nodes. Uh, where, what angle is that closest approach to the sun compared to the line of nodes. So when you measure all these numbers for all those orbits and you found a whole bunch of them <coughs> had that common number, that, that perihelion spot was right in the same place and right in the ecliptic, like something had just tossed them out, like they were all there and then something flung them from that same spot. The chances of that happening randomly are 0.007%. So it's not at all likely that nature just did that. And in fact, the orbits of the planets and the way they move things would cause all of those outer guys to kind of precess, as the word, or move their orbits around, and they would be randomized. You wouldn't get them all lined up there. So for them to remain lined up like that, something has to keep pumping them in that place and keep that, that perihelion position lined up with the other ones. That's something they believe has to be massive enough to do the job, and that mass required to do that job is about <laughs> 10 times the Earth's, Earth's mass. So they propose that there is a planet out there that, in fact, is the one doing it. 
And uh, so now the search is on. These are all the scattered guys, the guys that all the ones that were flung out. This orbit it represents where uh, he, they say planet X, he says planet 9, I'll come back to that in a second. And uh, so it's going to be somewhere visible in this range. Now we have to go find it. But we do have telescopes that will be, are strong enough to see it. So now the fun begins. Let's go looking for this object. We see its effects. It flung out these other guys. Where is it? And now there's a website called Find Planet 9. Um, and, and scientists will be coordinating their efforts to go find this planet. So here is a little diagram of our solar system and then a little diagram showing these other guys and then you twirl around so you can see it from the side. And uh, there they are. And in a minute you'll see this other guy come in, the, the proposed planet 9. The planet 9 is at such a great distance. It has an orbit that takes it 15,000 years to circle the sun once. So that's a long way away. Um, and that little guy in there is the orbit of Neptune. And we think of it, Neptune as being slow and far away. Well, planet nine is much, that's the next planet out from Neptune, um, much, much farther away, much uh, slower orbit. So, oh, first I gotta say, in their paper, uh, yeah, they notice this correspondence, then they do a lot of math. It's called, you know, a, an analytic, a solution where they actually like do math on a piece of paper. And I just love this little tweet. Perhaps the only time an autonomous Hamiltonian has garnered more downloads than Adele. Um, and there is all this. Because they put the paper on, there were 243,000 downloads of the paper. So, you know, this is pretty exciting, really. I don't think Hamiltonians, and if you've ever had any math, you know that's a way to sort of look at the way energy moves around a system to characterize it. Um, then, you know, that's just not common. I was, I was one of those downloads. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll come back to this in a minute, but this is to just say Planet 9 is indeed a planet. It, it, if this is a little diagram, I'm not going to go into it, that kind of separates the ability of a planet to clear its orbit, according to the IAU. And you can see these are all planets. These guys are the minor planets, because they just don't have enough oomph to clear their orbit. But Planet 9 is, well, above that line. So it, it is clearly a planet. It has cleared its orbit. It's flung all those guys, so we've seen it, and is by far at 10 solar masses, uh, pardon me, 10 Earth masses, uh, by far the most massive thing out there. Mike Brown, the discoverer, came by Griffith Observatory, and we were able to talk to him for a few minutes. So here is Mike Brown visiting. Mike, it's so great to have you here at Griffith Observatory. What brings you here tonight? Mike is unavailable tonight. Of course, we asked him to come, and he could not come tonight. But he is uh, glad he got a chance to talk to us and promises he will come at some point to talk further. So I just think that's a very cool thing, that the best proposal <coughs> for it is that it got flung out. And we've talked here in this program before about the dynamics of Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune and how that suggests that they flung something out in the past, and that could be Planet Nine. So, so it all kind of fits. Now we just have to see it. So keep uh, get your telescopes out, start looking, in Orion.